In this video, you'll find out how to organize your business's finances using an ancient technique. It's simple, it's free, and you can have it up and running in a matter of minutes. Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm James, this is Accounting Stuff, and in today's video, we're going to head back in time. Ooh. Why? Because I want to show you a quick and dirty method that you can use to start bookkeeping your small business today. Have you ever struggled with keeping a record of all of your sales and expenses? Can you tell me what your profit or loss for last month was? Maybe you've been stashing receipts in a shoebox under the bed, but it's all good. You'll sort them out when you find the time. Don't worry, we've all been there. And seriously, if any of that resonates, then congratulations. You're watching a video about accounting, which means you've taken the first step towards grabbing your business's finances by the and you can take that second step by subscribing to this channel for more weekly accounting videos. The biggest reason that small businesses fail is because of poor cash flow management. So we're going to make addressing that our number one priority. On accounting stuff, we've talked a lot about double entry accounting, even when we haven't mentioned it by name. The accounting equation, debits and credits, pretty much everything we've covered in the accounting basics playlist is a direct consequence of one, beautifully simple idea that there are two equal and opposite sides to every business transaction because in the world of finance, money can't magically appear or disappear. But in this video, we're gonna take all of that stuff and throw it out the window. Double entry accounting might be one of the greatest discoveries of the past 600 years, but it was invented for merchants in Venice who were doing complex trade with loads of different groups of people. Not all modern businesses are as complicated as that. So not all businesses need to use double entry accounting. The alternative predates double entry accounting by literally thousands of years. And it still has its place today, especially when we're talking small businesses with minimal financial transactions. Can you guess what it's called? Single entry accounting. I'm going to show you how you can use single entry accounting to manage your business's cash flow right now. Don't forget to watch this video through to the end because I have a free template to share with you. And I also want to make it clear that this quick and dirty template isn't for everyone. It has its flaws, so hear me out and we'll see if it fits in with your business. Let's go. We'll kick things off with a definition. The single entry system, single entry bookkeeping or single entry accounting, whatever you like to call it, is a method of bookkeeping that only recognizes one side of a business transaction as an accounting entry. Bookkeeping is what we call the process of recording all of your business's financial transactions. And that one side that we're going to recognize is an accounting entry to the cash account. I said earlier that the biggest reason that small businesses fail is because of poor cash flow management. Single entry accounting is about taking control of your cash account. So you've got a record of all of the cash flowing in and out of your business. And what's great about this system is that anyone can do it. It's simple and practical. All you need to get started is Excel or Google Sheets. Let me show you. Here we are in Google Sheets. I like to use Sheets because it's free, everything's safely stored in the cloud, and all you need to do to get started is have a Gmail account. And this, is what a single entry system looks like in its simplest form. We have a table that summarizes all of your business's transactions in a cash ledger, which is basically another name for your cash account. This is called a three column ledger because we have three columns for date, description, and amount. For this example, let's imagine that you're starting an e-commerce business from scratch. You're a keen writer, a dog lover, and a massive Harry Potter fan, so you decide to combine all of these passions together to create and sell Harry Potter fan fiction under the pseudonym JK Growling. Let's do the bookkeeping for your first month in business. Imagine we've gone back in time. It's January 2000, the new millennium. The Prisoner of Azkaban came out six months ago and you're desperate to get started on your fan fiction. The first thing we need to do is identify the accounting period. So we can go and write January 2000 in the top corner of your empty cash ledger. We now need to enter all of the transactions that happened in January. At the start of the month, your opening balance was zero. This is a brand new business, so there's no cash to begin with. You decide to head down to the bank and open up a new checking account. That's a good call because you don't want to get all of your business and personal expenses mixed up in your personal account. On the fifth, you decide to transfer $5,000 into your new checking account. This is your initial investment. If we were double entry accounting, you'd call this owner's equity, but we aren't, so we won't. A few days later, you decide to buy a laptop from the Apple store. This is what you're going to write all of your fan fiction on. 
you cough up a whole $2,000 on the spot and enter it into your cash ledger. Next, you want to set up a website so you pay $35 to register a domain online and a further $100 in hosting fees. You complete your ebook in record time and within a couple of days, you put up your first ad. The ad clearly works because two days later, you make your first sales. Over the next two weeks, you incur some bank fees, make some more sales and decide to buy a swish new office chair so that you can write at home in comfort. JK Growling closes out the month with $2,843 in the bank and has made a loss of $2,157. We can find that by taking the total of all of your income and expenses for the month, ignoring the initial investment because that doesn't fit into either category. Great, so we can easily calculate your business's profit and cash is being closely monitored. But on closer inspection, this template just looks like a copy of your bank statement. If only there was a way to get some more detail, then this would become really valuable to us. And that is where the multi-column approach comes in. The multi-column ledger works in a very similar way to the three-column ledger. We still have the three columns for date, description, and amount. But in the middle, we've packed in some extra detail. The first thing to note is that we now have a reference column. This is essential for any organized bookkeeping system. In this column, we give each transaction a unique reference number to help us identify it. And if you're really savvy, you can save backup documents that support each transaction in your Google Drive with a naming system that corresponds with these unique reference numbers. That way you can easily find and pull out the invoice for your office chair if you need it because everything is cross-referenced. Moving on to the right, we have grouped the columns into two main categories, cash in and cash out. This allows us to categorize all of our income and expenses into their own distinct columns. This will be a big help when tax time comes around because it makes it easy to identify all of JK Growling's taxable income and deductible expenses. Now we're talking, you can set up one of these templates for yourself by copying this layout. Or if you'd like to save some time, you can use this one for free and get started right away. I'll drop a link to it down in the description below. Just delete the sample data and you can get cracking. One important thing to note, you'll need to check the transactions in this template against the ones in your bank statement each month to make sure that none are missing. This is called doing a bank reg and it's critical because an incomplete cash ledger isn't much use to anyone. I've made a video explaining how to do a bank reconciliation that you can find up here in the corner. So that's how to start bookkeeping for your small business the quick and dirty way. This works great if you have minimal transactions because it's fast and easy to maintain. Very little accounting knowledge is required, so you might be able to get away without having to hire a qualified accountant or bookkeeper. Hold up, that being said, this system does have its flaws. It's the quick and dirty method after all. It's not for everyone. The double entry accounting system is one of the greatest discoveries of the past 600 years because there are two sides to every financial transaction. This single entry accounting system only recognizes one of these sides, so it gives you an incomplete picture of your business's books. You're also cash accounting, so you'll be exposed to all of the disadvantages of that method. Things like fluctuating profits caused by recognizing related income and expenses in separate accounting periods. More on that in this video. Another problem with cash accounting is that you have no idea what your business's financial position is, which is not ideal if your business buys or sells on account with credit terms because you won't be tracking your accounts receivable and accounts payable. So if that's the case, then what's the point? This single entry accounting method is a great place to start for anyone who runs a small business with few transactions and little to no assets or liabilities, especially if you don't have a bookkeeping system in place yet. This technique will help you get your books in order. Many small businesses are using a variation of this right now. However, double entry accounting is the king of all accounting systems. It's a much tighter method with built-in checks that leave less space for errors. It also gives you a complete record of your financial transactions. There's a reason why all large businesses use double entry accounting, so I would seriously consider upgrading to it at some point. The good news is that a single entry accounting record can be transferred into a double entry accounting system at any time. And if you've got things organized using a template like the one I've linked below, then it will make the whole process a lot less stressful. These days, double entry accounting is becoming more and more accessible to everyone. There are a whole bunch of cloud accounting software packages out there that do all of the double entries for you so you don't even have to think about them. 
A couple of the biggest names are QuickBooks Online and Xero. I'll link to a free trial of QuickBooks Online down in the description. And here's a video that I made that will give you a general overview of how it works. If you'd like to learn more about double entry accounting, I've made a whole playlist covering accounting basics for beginners that you can find here. Any questions, let me know down below in the comments and you can subscribe to Accounting Stuff by clicking on this circle for more weekly videos.